guys, thank you for coming on and doing this. Um, so, like I was saying before, this is kind of just a general chat about, um, I guess how we all ended up doing what we're doing in electronic music in general. And um, and I've been listening to your album a lot since it came out. And um, First Contact is about, from what I can gather, it's sort of about these um, novel experiences and kind of the beauty and like things happening for the first time and kind of um, and in in many different contexts. But um, one of the questions I've been asking a lot of people in these interviews uh, and kind of tying back into that was kind of about your your first experiences in electronic music. Do you guys have any sort of formative first clubbing experiences that sort of set you on a path to to wanting to make electronic music and to doing what you're doing right now, I guess. You wanna go first? Okay. <laughs> um, I only really started getting into electronic music maybe like three years ago or four four years ago, and mm-hmm. that was when I went to this electronic music festival in Melbourne in Australia, uh, called Pitch Festival, mm-hmm. and I think I saw Fatima Yamaha, and that was when I first started like that's like the first artist that I listened to where I was like oh I love I love this like I really like electronic Amazing. music. I feel like that's, that's such a, like, most people's entry point to electronic music is, like, super brash, like, terrible, like, dubstep or EDM or something. So mm, to have, like, yeah. Fatima, Yamaha... as yeah, like, a pretty case for it. I reckon... <laughs> yeah, but, like, I, the, I still the, think, the, like, you would have gone somewhere else, like, gone out, like, to clubs on the Gold Coast first before you went to Pitch. Yeah, yeah, actually, that's true. <laughs> I did... Go to oh, but that was like her, her, like for, formative, yeah, more think, formative experiences. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. But um, I don't know. What, for me, what are like, clubs like yeah. Sorry, go there's on. only oh, there's only really like one club that all of our friends were really going to um, when we mm. first started going out. And it's called Elsewhere because mm. all of the other clubs mm. on the Gold Coast. I don't know if you know much about Surfers Paradise, but it's like <laughs> the very um, I don't know full on party party scene. It's like right next to the beach. It's kind of like. It's kind of like the Jersey Shore of Australia, I guess. <laughs> but, um, it but, really is. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's so it's pretty full on. Like, it used to be mm. like they had these um, girls called meter maids that would go around and like put money, uh, wearing like gold bikinis and would put like money in the um, parking meters so that like you didn't get fined and stuff. So it's kind of like, it's, I don't know, it's probably like a bit like Miami, I guess. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. And what, but, um, what kind of music were they, were they playing down there? Um, uh, it just like depended where you, depended where you go, but where, where we went was, um, elsewhere. And I think it's where we, we all started listening to dance music a bit more. And like, mm-hmm. I think one of like my earliest tracks that I remember from going out was probably the Bad Kingdom remix. Um, the DJ code say Bad Kingdom remix is probably like the earliest <laughs> electronic song I think I can remember from clubbing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Again, before... these are, yeah, those are pretty good, like, entry points. Um, do you have the, I have you, so Fatima Yamaha is kind of your first experience, Amy, of, like, a set that, like, left an impression on you. Josh, like, do you have a, a particular set that you, in your mind you're just, like, that was, like, a light bulb moment where you were, like, oh, yeah, this is, like, this is something I'm really kind of into and then it's going to be, like, a big part of my life? Um been to so many like good gigs that I just I think like same as Amy Pitch music festivals was amazing um mm-hmm. I think seeing Bicep Live was amazing for the first time I think mm-hmm. I think we saw them pitch as well <laughs> when um, you lost your wallet I lost like a oh, man I just, <laughs> and your phone <laughs> I just like I'm just out of control when I go to go to festivals I just need to turn it down I like lost my phone wallet and like Almost lost the high car keys. I just like, <laughs> I just get really happy and just like lie down, and then like everything falls out of my pockets, and then yeah, it's just not not a good ending. Yeah, the next morning yeah. we have to go looking for. Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we definitely need to go to some some festivals together then. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, I think it was just like I, I think it was like during Op- like Opal, and I was like, this is my favorite song, and just like I was wearing like a like a golden robe and just like <laughs> li- lied down in the dirt and was like this is amazing lie down and then just like everything fell out of my pockets and then yeah. i got up and kept dancing and then... i think i have a wait, photo you... or a video you have it wait you have a okay we'll have to check that out because everyone like dresses wearing, up uh, for uh, pitch 
go- it yeah, was like a golden we're, kimono. We're doing a golden bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like we'd already finished our set. Like we, play- I think we played on like the first day, so we could like hang out and like actually enjoy the festival. Um, yeah, which is like why I kind of like playing on the first day. Um, mm. But yeah, it was good. We just um, played then and then just got to really enjoy it. It was good. Six. Oh, actually, no, so, Kiasmos, um, Kiasmos was one of the other ones that I think we saw that it was, like, quite a formative oh, experience. Sick. Yeah, I really loved seeing Kiasmos. Mm. Kiasmos, yeah. Uh, he's, um, um, like, so, a lot of the music that you guys make, I kind of, when I listen to you guys and your album, there's, like, you guys seem to resonate with a lot of, kind of, introspective dance music, music that has real, kind of, depth and, like, emotion on, like, an electronic level, and... When I first kind of found you guys, I was sort of reminded of like some sort of like inner visions kind of stuff and mm. sort of there's like, for me, there's like an influence of like things that like Dixon would play and stuff. Is, are there labels that you guys were kind of listening to or are listening to now that are kind of you feel are like particularly like impactful in your life or kind of have been a big influence in your sound or, or even just artists in particular? Well, yeah, we're listening to a lot of Frank Wiedemann and Arm and, like, the ho- we love the Howling Project mm. as well. So, yeah. yeah, we love a lot of the Inner Vision stuff. But, um, so, um... Like, we're listening to a lot of Moderat as well. Yeah, we um, both really mm. love Moderat. Yeah. Yeah, big fans. <laughs> and, like, uh, yeah, I'm a massive fan of Mood Selector like yeah. as well, so... I hope I can yeah. see them live. <laughs> when they come when back they come back, If please. they come back together. <laughs> I think I've seen you guys both post, like, moderate tunes, like, a couple of times. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I noticed that. I think um, I read somewhere as well, like, Nicholas Jar is, like, an influence for you guys. Would you say it's true? Yeah, I really love Nicholas Jar's music, but I've never really, like, been able to make anything that's, like, similar to it. Or I don't think I really want to make anything that's similar to it. I really want to jack it in style. And I, like, just appreciate that he's made, like, really good music. Um, I think I just, like, take random things from, like, his production and kind of put it into our stuff as well. Mm. Yeah, like, yeah te- absolutely. Like, more techniques and, um, of the sounds themselves. And am I right in thinking that um, you're classically trained or you're both classically trained or Josh, you're classically trained? Sort of, did you have, like, a, a grounding in, like, in classical music when you guys were starting out or...? Yeah, so Amy, Amy's the pianist. Yeah, like, I... My mum got me into piano, like, when I was, I think I was five or six, and, um, Uh, yeah, I did classical piano for, like, maybe, I think, until I was about, no, 16. That was the worst mm -hmm. (laughs) sentence. Um, yeah, I learnt classical piano until I was 16, and then I, um, quit, which I'm really sad that I did that, um. But I still go back every now and then and I'll, like, play the piano of all the old pieces yeah. I used to play. That's the thing is, like, when you're when you're young, like, the idea of you kind of hit this age and playing, like, classical instruments, like, becomes this kind of, you're like, oh, that's not cool, I want to go to other things. And then, mm. like, later on you kind of find yourself regretting it. Like, I, um... I used to play flute when I was like eight years old, and as soon as I turned like I don't know like hit like early teenage years, I was like, oh, the flute sucks. Like this isn't cool. And then like now, imagine if I could like riff out like jazz. Yeah, just bust out the flute. <laughs> yeah. What movie does he do that? Anchorman. Anchorman. <laughs> Seriously, I'm like imagine I'm Ron like Burgundy on stage styles. at a festival and just like riff out the flute and like running around yeah. like wireless flute. <laughs> Oh man, I'm yeah. actually gutted. I'm, I'm, What's I'm, the smaller one? The, it's like a is a piccolo. Piccolo. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. Piccolo. Just bust the like pocket piccolo. <laughs> bust it out. Yeah. Oh my god, I, I, that would be so sick. Like I'm kind of I'm heartbroken. That, I'm thinking about getting lessons and just like trying to get back to a, a place where like I can do at least like a little bit of flute. Just because I think yeah. like imagine if, some, if someone's like out of their mind in the crowd, they just look up and. <laughs> Just like pulled out the flute because like, <laughs> you could like always do it crazy. in a plug-in but it's, it's not the same as like just having it like and just whipping out the flute no nah. yeah. i i've also found like and i kind of wanted to ask you guys a bit about playing live like playing electronic music live is like a it's an interesting kind of thing to do because you're kind of recreating music that has been created in this sort of like unnatural environment you know in in like vsts and virtual instruments and stuff and and as such when you then go to play live i find there's certain things that like 
that you can do on stage that people really resonate with and then there's mm. things that people in the crowd don't resonate as much with so for instance like if i was to pull out like some modular kit on stage and spend like yeah. half an hour like twiddling with the knobs it people just would, would just make like... no sense to anyone whereas if you brought <laughs> yeah, out they'd... a flute that would just be yeah. like <laughs> exactly exactly and like but you might have like the chin strokers might be impressed. You might get like a certain like mm. section of the crowd who are like, oh, yeah, sweet module, yeah. bro. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, damn, yeah. bro. Oh, that's yeah, nice he must mix <laughs> vinyl too. <laughs> yeah, um, but I wanted to ask you guys about obviously um being an actor that plays live and and how you've sort of grown into that. Um, how has that? What challenges has that kind of presented for you as people that kind of you know enjoy club music and have like you know been like have ingested a lot of like DJs and club culture. How have you kind of found building this this live act and and what are kind of the things that you've enjoyed about playing live and becoming a live act versus just DJing, for instance? Yeah, so we first started out just playing as a duo, and then mm. slowly over the f- over the years we've like adopted a drummer, mm. and I don't know. I guess like when you're playing live anything that makes sense to the crowd like a guitar or like a, like keyboard like it just makes sense for people so I think like that's something that we've kept mm-hmm. in the set mm-hmm. even though like mm-hmm. I run a lot of like loops and like synth samples and stuff as well that like I'm not like playing live but I'm like fiddling with them and like changing like the changing mm-hmm. the effects and stuff on them but I guess like it just makes sense for someone to see you just like walking around with a guitar and playing it as well. So I think that's even like yeah. um, things like melodic hits and stuff, like I put onto like my SPD drum pad and stuff. So I think, yeah, uh-huh. like once people see that, like there's like, oh, he's he's doing that thing with the with the sticks yeah. and it just makes so much <laughs> sense. But, um, yeah. but you're right there. And then you do get like the chin strokers in the, in the crowd as well that you kind of want to impress as well. So then like, yeah, yeah you do some cool shit with, the, with your other stuff on stage but yeah. you also like you, you know you can't have you don't have 12 arms so it's like you yeah know, exactly you, you obviously in any track you've got like <laughs> at least a couple of synths and layers and like you, I, I mean i'm sure you're an incredible musician but you can't like play everything <laughs> at once you know? it is like, hard yeah and, no it's so hard mm, yeah you're right amy um how have you and how have you found sort of singing live and sort of like going from, you know, writing in the studio, have you always been someone who's, like, enjoyed performing and singing live, or is it something that kind of initially was intimidating, and, like, and how do you find it now? Um, I used to always be, I still am quite shy, so I remember when we first started playing shows, like, I used to freak out, and, like, when I got on stage, I would, like, get so nervous, and I'd look away. Um, And Amy has a mega quiet voice, too, (laughs) like, so, yeah. Um, the sound guys always have a tricky time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think over the years, I've definitely, um, I'm, de- I'm definitely a lot more confident on stage, and uh, I enjoy performing a lot. Yeah, Amy actually yeah, kills yeah, it on I, stage I now. Like compared to like really? when, when we first started, <laughs> like her presence from when mm. we started to now is just like so different. It's it's she funny because yeah. like I, I I like when I um. I sort of started like singing on tracks. I was never a singer, but I was just kind of like, fuck it, I'm gonna give this a try. And then like, yeah. I, I remember like when I first then had to like sing on stage, like the fear that was like injected into me. I just remember like, yeah. I went to sing like the, the first word of like the song and just like, all I could let out was this dry <laughs> little like. <laughs> <laughs> just a squeak. <laughs> yeah. It was mortifying. Like, it, it was just like this oh, little yeah. basement venue. And like, I was just yeah. so nervous. It was like sweat running down my forehead. <laughs> and I was just like, oh. But, I mean, as bad, and as, bad as it is. One like, shot, one opportunity. <laughs> Mum's spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I um yeah I, I'm like, I don't know it's, it's kind of a bad thing but like I started to find that if I had like a shot of tequila before I went on stage that I'd be like a little bit more lively. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd like come out on stage just to be like a little bit looser with um the help of a little Don Healy or something. Yeah, but, Amy, Amy just um, does shots before she goes on stage. Yeah, I do five shots every time. It's <laughs> five shots. <laughs> I actually have five shots and she's like spinning around in circles and then we're just like all right go we just like let her out yeah (laughs) like on the floor like yeah yeah that's why i'm more confident now real hard whiskey too (laughs) 
Yeah, your, your growth on stage is just like more shots before coming out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she thinks she's doing um, a really good job, but really she's just yeah. like drunk. <laughs> that, note to self. Um, so yeah. uh, it's kind of moving from that. So you guys play live now, you tour and like the, and by the looks of it, the shows have been like incredible. You guys are setting up shows all over Australia and stuff. Do you guys, um, I know that you guys have put together mixes and stuff before. Are you um, people who DJ a lot at home? Are you like, do you, how do you find DJing in comparison to playing live? Is it something that you guys like want to do a lot of kind of publicly or is it something that just like influences you at home or, or are you, do you enjoy DJing like full stop? I actually started DJing first before I started producing. So yeah, I, I love it. Yeah. Um, have so. been for a while now and then I think mm. I'd like start I, like I started by like playing other people's edits and stuff and going oh I want to like make my own and then started making my yeah. own remixes and then started mm-hmm. like making our own production and stuff mm. and mm-hmm. yeah like I love DJing and I love song selecting and I love playing like with my friends and stuff um I just get really mm. nervous playing in clubs I love playing in clubs but it's just like I don't know I just get for some reason I can play like whatever instrument but sorry instrument but as soon as like there's a mixer in front of me i'm just like yeah i wig out and then like i'm really Seriously? good at beat matching when well, i don't know what it is like <laughs> like i'm i've done it for ages and like i'm like so fine at djing like I, it's so easy mm. but then sometimes i just like do whack shit and just like don't beat match properly and then like like circling back but yeah i i love djing it's so much fun and like i love that you can have like your own character in it as well like it, it comes down to yeah. song selection and stuff and yeah yeah that's funny though that like you you know <laughs> I would definitely say most people would find playing live like far more intimidating than like DJing. But like, I mean, that's, I, I understand it as well. Like, uh, you know, that feeling when you kind of like go into, especially like a big room and like yeah. your monitoring is different and then you're just like, mm. oh God, and it's such a like simple thing you got to do really. Or mm. it's something that you do so often, but then like yeah. you fuck it up and you and you just kind of go inside yourself. And yeah. You're like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> like, hide. Well, like with live stuff, I guess like everyone's there to see you, so it's like that's mm. that's the one stress is taken away. Whereas like sometimes you'd be playing a DJ set like in a random club mm. somewhere, or it's not like build correctly or something, and you're playing earlier in the night, and like you're just playing to like six people that you have to like really impress that you do not know, they don't know you. So yeah, yeah, it's a big trust building I, I, exercise. I, 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 I love the warm up set. So I used to I was a resident mm. in Liverpool, which is where I went to um university in. Uh, how I got into all of this, I guess, was I was like the resident at Chibuku, which was like this big night there, and and all the like big acts would come to town, and like my my job every like weekend would be to like start with the room being completely empty, and then like by the end of the like of my set would sort of be teeing up the headliner. But I used yeah. to like I, I love that progression because I think like first couple times I would play, the idea of playing like an empty room is like kind of gutting, it. and then like. I started to really love the like the almost game of like you got to pull people onto the dance floor and like slowly like build up this set from like yeah. you know no one in the room and I kind of yeah. miss that like I, I really miss yeah. like getting to play the warm up sets and stuff but um have you, and what about you Amy do you DJ or <laughs> I'm still learning um okay. <laughs> I do like I think I'm going to enjoy it heaps. Like I really like um yeah. picking like selecting. You don't enjoy stuff. it now. <laughs> no, I don't enjoy <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, one day I'm going to. One enjoy day. It. But not today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I like practicing and I stay up. Late. I stay up late a lot and um, look for songs and, and I enjoy doing that. Have you Have you guys ever played like back to back in public or? No. No, we have, like, but it's um, been more like Amy selects a song and then, like, I kind of mix it in yeah. kind of thing. Whereas, so, like, I think we're one. moving forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that song. <laughs> That's a good one, Josh. I, I, like, I, I'm sure you guys have been asked this loads, but, like, obviously being a, a brother-sister duo, how does that kind of... Do you do you feel it affects the process when you're like you're writing music together? Because obviously, like I, I have two brothers, and uh, you know they're like an extension of myself. You know I'm like super close with them, and but they they don't make music, and mm. I always wondered what it's like to kind of make music with a sibling that you're like so close to. Like, do you guys feel like it's a special <laughs> thing or? Like we definitely fight. Like we <laughs> always have arguments and like. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. It's it's good because like we can be like s- super honest with each other. 
um sometimes it's like brutally yeah. honest but but like we can just be straight up and be like that sucks or like we don't like that or that's not a vibe straight up whereas like if you're like working with someone else yeah. it's like this is a bit of like a I don't know this thing where you're like oh I don't know if I should tell them that I don't like it whereas like oh, yeah yeah. We don't yeah. like it, they just move on to the next thing. But I feel thing. like over time you would start to get like that. Yeah. Like any group or... Yeah, I guess so. Mm. Yeah. No, but that's... Like, you're, you're so right. Like, it's so often that, like, you'll get, like, halfway into a day and everyone in the room will just, like, know that what you're working on, like, isn't good enough. But, like, mm. it's so British just to be, like... Often I'll turn around and be like, oh, are we vibing with this? And I was like, yeah, yeah, let's <laughs> love it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, whereas if it, if it was like my brothers, I'd just be like, this is shit, let's move on, do something else. <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah. And, well, that's and the thing, like, that's yeah, exactly great. it. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, totally that's, it. That's, that's awesome. Um, you, so you guys are, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you're half Australian, half Japanese, right? Mm-hmm. Have you guys been over to Japan and have you been able to experience any club culture out there? Have you been clubbing in Japan at all? No, I haven't yet. I've never been old enough. <laughs> yeah, you have to be 20 to go out in Japan. Yeah, I can go really? out now. Yeah. Uh, oh, shit. Okay, what about you, Josh? Clubbing in Japan's sick. Yeah, I spent like... <laughs> I, sp- I spent heaps of... I've spent heaps of time there, um, but like we we go, we try and go like once a year when when obviously we when we can go, but um, I spent maybe like four or five months there, and uh, I don't know until like the big clubs like Worm and like Ageha, which is like the four level ones, and like mm. some other ones like kind of more grungier clubs and like. So how 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 do you find it like differs from Australia clubbing, for instance? Um, there's just, like, way more culture in Tokyo, um, and it's mm-hmm. all different, mm-hmm. like, there's hip-hop bars, there's, like, just strictly vinyl-only mm-hmm. places as well, and mm-hmm. there's, like, the gigantic EDM four-level <laughs> clubs. Have you, have you been? Yeah, have you been, have, have you been? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see it, yeah. Um, I can't remember the name of the club, which is really bad, but I've been to Tokyo twice, and it's, it's like, yeah. favourite place in the it's world. So it's so awesome. Like yeah, it's so sick. Like, like the the food the culture like everything is just like mm. wild and but i kind of i haven't done like the deep dive on like the clubbing and like club culture and i kind of yeah I, w- I wanted to see how it differs because tokyo for me is one of those places that like you step off the plane most places in like western world and they're like fairly similar you have the same like chains the same like you know um brands yeah. and stuff and there might be a different language spoken but culturally there's sort of a lot of parallels but when I went to Tokyo it was like I felt like I was in a new kind of universe even you know it's like there were so many things that were like done differently but like in an amazing way and it's kind of like I wondered what it was like to really dive into I don't know like some of the techno clubs there or like what kind of music was like resonating out there it's really cool like I think that the like the deeper you go the more friends you make and like when you broaden your network there and stuff it just like it opens up so much and it just gets like deeper and deeper mm. and just um I, I remember um like I I DJ'd at like my friend's birthday that like I like we don't even speak anymore because it's been so long but like I remember yeah. I was there and there was like six of us there and like I walked into the bathroom and like do you know Virgil Abloh? <laughs> yeah. Do you know yeah. <laughs> Well, like it was just so, it was just so random it was like like six or seven years ago or like maybe eight years ago and I was just like I walked like just I was just like in the toilet with Virgil Abloh and then he like walked out I was like wait a second that's and then that was like my first DJ what? experience in you know for, for a minute for a minute when when you said you know Virgil I thought you meant like personally for a minute and I was like, oh well, no like I definitely that... I don't know him personally and like he doesn't know who I am either like from a bar of soap but like it well, was just he, he might do he's, he's pretty nah, tactic no he might like your guys music <laughs> uh, maybe like... but yeah it was um but yeah it was just like a random birthday and then like later on everyone left and then it was just like four of us there just DJing in a club <laughs> it was so funny mm. um so on the t- on the topic of Virgil, um, I've read somewhere that you you worked in fashion at one point, Josh, and you both are immaculately dressed individuals. Is fashion kind of? I'm immaculately dressed of... in your merch. 
Uh, that, that was actually just a compliment to myself. I was I was waiting for you to like notice. I've slowly been going uh, like this. Oh, uh, dude! At, at the very start, I think it like glitched. I think we were setting up the audio. I was like, "Oh, you're wearing the shirt." Oh, I think oh, were, like, okay. Setting up the voice now. Oh, true. <laughs> okay. Oh, right, right. Let right. me go back to it. But right, I was right, like, right. "Oh no!" I I thought you just were like, "Yeah, of course I am." And like, oh man, here I am. I'm no. like just like counting down the minutes. I'm like, oh, thirty minutes hasn't you're noticed like, yet. 32 minutes. You're like, <laughs> no, no, it's the f- first thing I noticed, but thank you for repping the merch, and if you're watching, no. you go buy the merch. But, uh, <laughs> Shout but out. It, it, it looks really good on us. <laughs> I'm just pushing in the merch. This is all it's this is for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, was, this was not a paid advertisement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this isn't actually uh, an interview yeah. or a chat. This is just, this yeah. is just uh, one, one long shut, advert. Shut the buy merch, link. <laughs> in the description. Um, but I wanted to ask you, like, is fashion part of like w- how does fashion play a role in like you guys and how you express yourself on stage or like as artists because I, I, I feel like you guys one of the things you you're amazing at is you guys sort of build like a visual world around lastlings and there's like a very strong sort of aesthetic um in the visuals and i would say does that like extend into the way you dress and kind of how did you get into fashion or, or sort of or how did that become like a, a thing that you guys became really good at? Hmm. Well, we both started modelling when we were thirteen. Oh, I started mm-hmm. when I was thirteen. Well, I, like, I don't think you <laughs> Great, great <laughs> genes then. <laughs> um, Amy was thirteen though. She started was, super young. Yeah, I was like I was maybe 13. sixteen, seventeen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I think that's so. how we started to get into fashion. Just yeah, doing mm-hmm. a lot of photo shoots yeah. and meeting lots of different people in the industry. And yeah, then we mm-hmm. started to like get a lot of like friends who are stylists and um, like our probably like closest fashion friends are probably um, this brand called Song for the Mute in Australia. And mm-hmm. well, we'll we we're really massive fans of their clothes before, and then we mm-hmm. kind of hit them up for our first video clip to dress us, mm-hmm. and that was super nice and. No, they're um, our family. Yeah, they're like a little family now, which is great. <laughs> yeah. And I've I um I've been soundtracking their like um soundtracking their campaigns and stuff. So um each mm. I think I've done like four or five now. Um and they've been like playing oh, in Dover Street Market and stuff and like in their um in their showroom in Sydney. So it's oh, nice crazy. how and that's how like works hand in hand and they yeah. they make amazing clothes so we we're wear really, a lot of yeah, it on we're really stage lucky. and for shoots. Yeah, shoots and yeah stage so normal, normal that's way. awesome so do you, do you guys have like other like favorite brands or are you guys do you rep them on stage mostly then or is there do you guys have like other brands that you guys are like big fans of particularly again this is getting very brandy isn't it very like <laughs> we're just, <laughs> more we're just like really chugging for our sponsorships <laughs> like yeah, yeah yeah but like personally i actually yeah. love <laughs> h&m <Well. laughs> it just popped up on the screen <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, brands. but yeah, do you, do you have any other favorite brands? Or? I like, I really like a cold wall and like all like yeah. um, mm. that kind of stuff. And I don't know, over the years, I've just gotten really mm. like um, I, I wear a lot of black because I just like destroy anything that's colored or white. Like I would wear a white shirt and then like like twenty seconds mm. in, I'll just drop something on this it. This shirt's gonna be like <laughs> like I'm ha- I'm happy this is kind of like off white yeah. because this will probably like last maybe like three yeah. days. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was actually white to start with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously, I put it on. It was like ten seconds. It's changed color. But like, yeah, I, and like, if mm. we've been lucky that we've been able to get like a more like expensive garments that kind of last a bit longer. So, I think, mm. um, yeah, I just couldn't get anything so, white that's expensive because I'd be so sad if I destroyed it. <laughs> so on on the topic of like visuals and kind of the visual worlds you guys build. Um, uh, Amy, we spoke about how, you know, like a, a TV show, Normal People, would influence the writing of All We Have, our song yep. together, go by now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, Every I opportunity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is getting out of hand. Um, but, Go stream uh, times uh, now. Yeah. <laughs> so it's clear that, like, uh, that uh, visuals are something that inspire you guys. And, and I know that uh, I've seen you post about a few animes, um, Amy and I wanted to ask if like you know are there films and visuals that have been a big part of of last things and and your album and 
do you kind of look to, to visual inspiration when writing music much? Yeah, like Josh and I usually play a movie in the background when we're writing music. And um, really? one of our, yeah, one of our favorites is Blade Runner. Like, I think that's our all time favorite movie. Um, yeah, sick. Yeah. No, I can't really, like, awesome. get, I don't know, like, just, I feel like studios are so boring, like, mm. it's just, like, walls, and just, wait, how do you get, how do you get inspiration from walls, <laughs> so we just kind of, no, like, yeah, uh, I've, like, really, I've really got, I've really got to this point where, like, I, I can't, unless I'm just, like, working on production, finishing things, like, mm. for writing now, like, I find it really hard to just go into, like, a dungeon studio and, like, and do the thing now like i, I try mm, yeah. i keep trying to put put myself in like weird scenarios to like to write music and like obviously that's you know lucky to be in a position to do that now but like i'm, I'm yeah. going to like a a residential studio in a couple of weeks just to like it's like a couple of hours outside of london and it's like super beautiful but i'm just gonna like bury yeah. myself and then lose my mind but, but yeah i felt like there was such a kind of strong connection between even the like the I can't remember what they called canvases on Spotify and some of the visuals that you kind of include in your music was there was there someone that you worked with across the whole album who sort of like who dictated how it looked or was that something that you guys kind of put together yourselves or or a combination or um we're like we're pretty lucky we have some like really talented friends um so we so all the stuff that's like on Spotify and all like the album trailer and stuff we went to Japan to film and mm -hmm. it was all like i guess it's all our visual inspiration and like kind of our creative mm. direction and stuff but like it's mm. like to actually like pull it off and get, like get our ideas onto paper basically like we needed our friends like dylan one of our close friends is like a really talented director and we went over with mm -hmm. him to japan and like um he was filming a lot of stuff and i filmed a bunch of stuff as well and yeah, it was just like a really nice like collaborative process where we could and like he has similar tastes as well which is which is good and i think he always has like our best interest at heart as well so um that's sick yeah Amazing. yeah it's cool yeah i think we've like got a good thing with him and he's done like the last three video clips i think he did the first mm -hmm. one and then like the last one and then the album trailer so yeah but yeah we get that's get sick. a lot of inspiration from like different movies and like love watching a film while i produce like it feels like i'm scoring the film yeah. or something as well so. I, I wish um i wish my friends were that talented and my all my friends just <laughs> sit in the pub for like 12 hours a day on the weekend and like get hammered yeah i've got those fr i've got those i've got those friends as well but like i'm, I'm lucky i've got like the other ones as well yeah it's, ba it's balance right? yeah <laughs> balance yeah um so you guys are in australia now obviously and you guys are um, I guess Australia feels like the center of the universe right now with um, you guys sort of being practically COVID free and having some return of like of normal life. Like what what's it like having clubs? Are clubs open right now? Have you had like a return to clubbing? And, and what it, like what did that feel like kind of having been in a pandemic and having those things taken away? Like, do you have like a newfound appreciation for those things now that they're back? I, the first thing I went to when um, everything went back to normal was a rave <laughs> in, in Brisbane <laughs> and it was so fun and like being able to dance again was like the best feeling. I missed it so mm. much. This topic's mm. super hard for us though because like it was not, it wasn't that bad where we live. Mm. Like everything, mm. there, there was like some, like a lot of restrictions and stuff but like we could still go out mm. and like yeah. We just go couldn't to the beach dance, and that's all. Could, yeah, you that's can't like go to, thing, yeah. couldn't go to clubs and dance and mm -hmm. yeah, I think we we're really lucky where we were compared to a lot of other places in the world that like literally you can't even leave your house. Yeah. Um, but yeah, mm. once everything started to open up, it really like opened up. Like, it's all, all the raves went back to normal. <laughs> There's like clubs opened, and I think now they're doing. We were supposed to go to Melbourne and do some shows, but mm. there was some like border closures between the states. Um, so we mm -hmm. had to move some stuff, but a lot of stuff's moving around. So hopefully it's like going to yeah. start becoming concrete. Did, did you feel any kind of like, um, sort of post pandemic, like explosion or, or was there not enough of a shutdown for like, cause basically the, not the fear here, they kind of like, there's an mm. apprehension in the UK around the fact that we've been locked down so long that like every, it's like 
it's just like a ticking time bomb of like energy everyone's just like talking about this date the 21st of june which is when we're like basically gonna be like <laughs> oh, <no. left> free. <laughs> and it, yeah. it's, it's it's just it's looking like it's set up just to be utter chaos like was was there yeah. any kind of sort Anarchy of day yeah was there any sort of explosion as it like opened back up is there like a sense of people in back in those environments just being like oh shit like we didn't have this for a second and like a newfound energy there was there not enough of a closure to kind of feel that well melbourne melbourne went down into full lockdown and they had it really tough down there um so as soon as it's opened up i've just seen all my all my friends down there videos and like photos they sent me it just looks crazy at the moment so i'm really excited mm-hmm. to get down there we're going down there next month to play some shows and DJing and stuff Sick. as well, so I'm really excited. Yeah, just the, the videos are psycho from down there. <clears throat> I, I feel like I feel like the first thing we've got to do when I make it down to Australia or you guys make it over to here, whatever, is we got to, you got to like take, we got to go out together either to like a festival or a rave or something because <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say like... a pub. Yeah, I thought you were going to say pub. <laughs> That's what like... we've been no, talking no, about. All right, if, if, you, if you guys come here, we're going to the pub and if I'm oh, there, we're going. Festival. We'll go. For, uh, we, hey, either way around. Either way, it sounds great. Um, so to kind of round this up, this is a funny question for you guys. Um, but it's sort of I've been rounding off this series, asking everyone this question, and um, it's all in regards to kind of <laughs> things, <laughs> things being um shut and the pandemic and stuff. So you guys obviously have things back. You have clubs and all this, but I've been asking people what is the first song that they play in like a post-pandemic world and in the okay so everything locks down and you're allowed back into the club for the first time to dj for like you know for us it's like a year and a half going on now obviously you've had this moment kind of Mm. but what is if you were stepping out after a year and a half of like not being able to play records in a club or play music to people what's the first song you play Oh my god. <laughs> That's so nice. I don't want to hear. I'm sick of hearing Abba, gimme, gimme, gimme. <laughs> Never want to hear that song again. I feel like, because obviously that, that song had the the boiler room moment with Follimore. Shout out, Follimore. Yeah. Good, good friend oh, of mine. Oh, dude, that, like... that moment was amazing, but it's just like, it just keeps going and going in like a shredding like, concert. Like he, because like, oh. he's, he's sort of like, he's sick of it speaking to him where he's like oh, oh god really? like well he well he's basically like every gig he plays now we just get people going play, yeah, play, play the song play the song he's like i'm not abba like i didn't make this yeah. song like i just <laughs> played it one time like uh, and he's like he's, he's an incredible dj so it kind of like i think it just like frustrates him that people it's, there's now a crowd of people like a viral crowd that are going just to like hear follow more play like gimme gimme when obviously he has like so much more to offer as a dj um but i've kind of seen it become like it's had this like snowball effect in australia and i just see crowds of like australians like gimme 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 like jumping around (laughs) okay Um, so it's not abba what is it (laughs) it's a very on the spot question as well and and an annoying one i know (laughs) I'd love to play like any Nelly Furtado song. That'd be pretty fat. <laughs> I think like promiscuous be... girl, or, like man eat or something. Yeah, It'd be so yeah, yeah. Okay, like I want to pick something. Answer. I want to pick something that would be that's like like a breakout song from like being locked up for so long, but nothing's coming to mind. So I'm just like, yeah, promiscuous girl. Mine's hung up. <laughs> Madonna. Yours hung up, Madonna. Yeah. I love that. I You're like, I'm not gonna play. I'm not going to play Gimme Gimme, but I'm going to play the song that samples it. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Absolute, absolute banger, though. That album's so crazy. Like, when you go back and listen to Confession and Dance Flow, it's like, it's crazy how weighty the production is. It's, I mean, mm. again, shout out to Stuart Price, who, like, produced all of it. And it sound, but it sounds like a club record. Like, even if you compare it to, like pop dance records it's got like yeah it's huge really like it. <laughs> it's really good yeah it's just got these like heavy instrumentals and then just like madonna on the top of them it's fucking crazy yeah but my friends and i always it... sing that song, yeah. one song <laughs> anytime i'm like djing or if it's like one of our like birthdays or just parties at home all of amy's friends will come up and be like josh can you play <laughs> hung up play madonna <laughs> I was like, oh, go away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll play. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, 
like, bro, fuck off, it makes me vinyl. Yeah, <laughs> I'm playing ABBA, go away. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm playing obscure <laughs> ambient techno, like, leave yeah. me alone. Like, play with that. I'm at 160 oh, BPM, love... bring it down. Yeah, I, I, love you, I love your impression of Amy's friends as well. <laughs> yeah. That's his impression of me. <laughs> A- yeah, Amy has like one tone, and it's like, I'm Amy. <laughs> <laughs> you just have a one size fits all impression for Amy. Dude, all friends. of our all of our friends do the Amy impression now, and like, <laughs> I'm scared of this to go like on YouTube and stuff because now maybe everyone's gonna start no, doing no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I'm, I'm not popular enough. So <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, uh, great choices by the way. Uh, thank not you so much. Not popular enough. You're on a billboard in Times Square, bro. <laughs> 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 don't, don't give me uh, that. You know. <laughs> it's, it's been so strange because like all these things are going on around the album and the album that you guys have been a huge part of and thank you for, uh, i love the tune we did together but i've been sat here this is basically my parents attic i've just like got some synths there and stuff and there's some monitors behind me but like basically since lockdown uh, i live in london but like i live in a flat and it's just like i lose my mind if i stay there because i'm just like locked down mm. and just by myself and sort of a, a box room sort of thing and um it's been so strange because all these things are going on and but like i do the same shit every day <laughs> like I'll, I'll go downstairs and i'll be like you know like the times square thing will happen or like the james corner thing and i'll be like oh, oh yeah that's also dinner, huge mom? yeah it's so <laughs> huge yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry that sounded like such a like name drop as well but um <laughs> but yeah i'm just gonna i'll go downstairs with like no socks on i'll be like oh mom what's for dinner <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's like all these things are going on, but it just doesn't really feel like they're they're happening whatsoever. But um, but no, what's, the, what's I, for I dinner, mum? Just on the phone to James Gordon. <laughs> mum, shut up! I'm trying to James. <laughs> mum, shut up! I'm talking to James Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much for doing this. I I love the track we did. I can't wait to perform it live together, or even just to DJ it somewhere together. And I I can't wait for said festival or pub when we finally get mm-hmm. reunited in the sort of post pandemic world but um it's gonna be great th- thanks for doing this and i will speak to you guys as soon as possible and see you soon thank you, thank you so much thank thanks you so for having much. us man yeah.